the impacts of educational inequality in modern day Australia are far reaching. Despite Australia's position amongst Western world powers like Canada and the United Kingdom, issues of inequality are abundant, causing issues such as unemployment, unequal access to education resources, among other things. The problem of educational inequality may be approached by use of the conflict theory sociological perspective, understanding social class and related concepts as explanations for the social problem at hand. In this presentation, a justification will be provided for the importance of this problem. Conflict theory will be discussed to understand the fundamental concepts that may be applied. Some of these elements such as power dynamics, social stratification and social conflict will be applied and related to educational inequality to find and explain the root of this issue. Francis E. Merrill established a definition for social problems, explaining that a social problem is comprised of its effects on society, its persecution of a social value, and the belief that the problem can be alleviated through social action. Education equality is the goal of Australian education facilities, as outlined with the aim to ensure that young Australians of all backgrounds are supported to achieve their full education potential, as outlined by the Education Council. Thus, educational inequality is the failure of this goal unequal access and distribution to education, opportunities and academic resources. Demographic-based statistics allow us to see what effect educational inequality has on Australians. In 2022, 7.6% of Australians between the age of 15 to 24 were not engaged in work or study, along with 13.1% of those between the age of 25 to 44, as stated by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Other data released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics in 2022 shows that 35.5% of students were enrolled in non-government education. Of the government educational facilities attended by the other 64.5% of students, 41% can be categorised as disadvantaged schools. This is in stark contrast to 3% of Catholic and 1% of independent schools within this category. As part of the Closing the Gap framework, the National Indigenous Australians Agency reported that in 2016, 65% of Indigenous Australians aged 20 to 24 had achieved Year 12 attainment or equivalent, compared to 89% in non-Indigenous Australians. The OECD notes that educational inequality is linked to issues of limited career opportunities, economic disparity, reduced social mobility, unemployment, along with many other things. The OECD goes further, however, to highlight broader social impacts of educational inequality, such as its effects on an economy's growth and expansion, increased crime and deviance, health and social support, funding disparity, social cohesion, and more. In a 2017 report, economic costs associated with educational disengagement were linked to categories of labour market, crime, health, welfare, and education. The wide-reaching effects of this social problem affects society and individuals at large, Dr. Sue Thompson of the Australian Council for Educational Research, here and referred to as ASA, calls attention to the lack of progress within the education system and horrifying scale of the issue, with findings that 20% of 15-year-old students in Australia fail to achieve the international baseline proficiency in literacy and numeracy. With school generally being mandatory in Australia until the ages of 15 to 17, and thus compulsory for many future workers, civics and educators, education inequality impacts the nation deeply. Conflict theory as a whole seeks to explain the issues of social inequalities within society based upon the notion of class. It looks not at how the individual is responsible for social inequality, but instead towards the larger population and the broader classes within, as a macro perspective. Conflict theory offers an understanding of society by viewing it as a dynamic arena for power struggles and social conflicts, motivated by factors such as money or political power. Within this arena of society, individuals and groups take action to seize control of resources and restrict how said resources are distributed to others amongst them. Although emerging from the works of scholars such as Karl Marx, Max Weber, and Friedrich Engels, conflict theory has evolved and grown to specialize in different fields and topics of sociology. A core element of conflict theory is the concept of power imbalances. In society, individuals and groups wield varying degrees of power and influence, which profoundly shape their experiences and access to resources. These power imbalances are reflected within the classes of a capitalist society, such as the standard archetypes of the bourgeoisie, or ruling elite, and the proletariat, or working class. This imbalance can lead to stark disparities in life opportunities, access to resources, and quality of life, further exacerbating social inequalities as a whole. As part of its understanding of social class, conflict theory emphasizes the role of social stratification, a hierarchical arrangement of individuals or groups based on factors such as wealth, class, race, gender, culture, or religion. 
These hierarchies perpetuate inequalities in access to resources, opportunities, and privileges. Social stratification manifests in a variety of forms, not strictly in the form of classes as we understand them in Western society. Examples of stratification models in history include the Indian caste system, European feudalism, or South African apartheid. Conflict theorists focusing on class-based societies may view stratification as being related to the means of production, with those at the top of the hierarchy controlling the means of the production and thus further agitating social inequalities. Another pivotal concept in the framework of conflict theory is social conflict. Conflict theory defines conflicts arising from competing interests and values as social conflict, generally in relation to the control of power. Although in the short term a social conflict may have negative effects, they are seen as a driving force behind eventual societal change. Conflicts between groups can lead to policy reform, shifts in power dynamics, and changes in societal structures overall. Although it has not come to fruition in any known capitalist society, the concept of social conflict extends further to Marx and Engels' idea of social revolution. Finally, conflict theory underscores the fundamental structural inequality that exists within society. This pertains to systemic disparities in resource and opportunity access, often embedded within institutions and social structures. Structural inequalities serve to protect the divide that exists between the upper class and lower class. These structural inequalities can impact various aspects of an individual's life, from economic opportunities to educational experiences, regardless of age. The social problem of educational inequalities in the Australian context can be analysed through the lens of conflict theory to understand it in its modern configuration. Within the context of education, power imbalances may present between social groups such as policymakers, school administration, teachers and students themselves. Imbalances between these groups may influence decisions and changes related to school funding, curriculum development and educational policies. The 2011 Gonski Review of Educational Outcomes in Australia highlighted the need for change in government with the hopes of future improvement in education quality. A 2023 report from the Centre for Future Work highlighted the gross underfunding of public schools, stating that a 15% increase in funding, a measure of $6.6 billion per year, would be required to meet the school resource standard. According to Cobold, over 80% of disadvantaged students in 2019 attended public school. Currently, students' outcomes post-education is often highly correlated with the socioeconomic status of their parents, owing to the power imbalances that are already present. These factors strengthen the idea of power imbalance and that different groups within society hold different levels of power and influence. This in turn is a key element in the formation of educational inequality in the Australian context and as a social problem overall. The understanding of social stratification may also be applied to the social problem of educational inequality to understand the root of the issue in Australia. Within education, social stratification may appear as disparities of education resources and opportunities due to socioeconomic factors. A basic example of this would be a student of a lower class background only being able to ascend schools with fewer resources. While overlap exists, a 2015 poll conducted by the Australian National University established five classes that Australians fit into. Established working, established middle, mobile middle, emergent affluent and established affluent. Collectively, the two lowest classes, the established working and established middle, make up 50% of those surveyed and are categorised by an annual household income of 20 to 40 and 60 to 80k respectively. It is noted that learning from home at the time required students to have access to educational resources including a computer, reliable internet connection, and in some instances, specific software with varying levels of cost. Those with lower socioeconomic class were left as the most disadvantaged during COVID-19 lockdowns due to overall lack of access to resources. This is further evident as Australian Bureau of Statistics data indicates that there are on average half as many electronic devices with capabilities for learning in remote or low socioeconomic households than those in middle class households alone. These factors greatly strengthen the concept of social stratification as a root of educational inequality in Australia and broad society. Social conflict is a clear foundational cause of educational inequalities that are present in modern Australia. Social conflict manifests itself in educational inequality by way of disputes related to educational funding, curriculum content, and access to quality educators. Historically, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders have been victims of social conflict through discrimination and cultural insensitivity, alongside resistance to incorporation and maintenance of Indigenous knowledge and language in the Australian education system. As an example of curriculum content as a form of educational inequality, Tom Karma in a 2008 presentation on Indigenous education reform stated that of the 300 estimated Indigenous languages thought to have existed pre-colonialism, only 20 are not considered a risk to this day, emphasising how vital the education system is in sustaining these languages. 
Efforts have been made by way of reforms and policy changes to improve the quality of educational access and opportunities for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Analyzing the success of the Closing the Gap initiative, it was reported by the National Indigenous Australians Agency that the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians attaining Year 12 or equivalent in education had narrowed from 36 percentage points to 24 from 2006 to 2016. This highlights not only how social conflict has impacted educational inequality in current day in Australia, but also the negative and potentially positive implications that come with it. Inequalities in the education system of Australia allow for issues of unequal job opportunities, unemployment and resource inequality to persist. Conflict theory aims to address social inequalities through social class and power dynamics. Through this, it can be used as a sociological lens to understand and address educational inequality. In working towards solving national social inequalities, conflict theory provides a hopeful future for bettering our future generations.